Some people have been waiting a long while for this. It's the Nikon Z7. I'm here at the London launch of the Nikon Z6 and Z7, Nikon's first full frame mirrorless cameras. Let's find out a little bit more about each one. So the Z6 and the Z7, what exactly are the differences? I've got the Z7 in my hand and this has a 45.7 million pixel full frame backside illuminated CMOS sensor. Now that sensor has 493 phase detection AF points. It has an ISO sensitivity range of 6400 up to 25,600 and it can shoot at a shooting rate of up to nine frames per second. So the Z6, it's got a 24.5 million pixel resolution, but it uses the same backside illuminated sensor technology. It's got 273 phase detection AF points, but it's still got 90% coverage of the frame like the Z7. ISO sensitivity, we go from ISO 100 to 51,200. And finally, we can shoot at up to 12 frames a second. But in terms of build and handling, the Z6 and the Z7 are virtually identical. They're fully magnesium alloy, we've got mag alloy top plates, front plates and back plates and both cameras also have a LCD display on the top here. The kind of thing we're used to seeing on high-end enthusiasts and professional DSLR cameras. Layout wise it's going to be very very familiar to Nikon DSLR users. You're going to be able to pick it up and use it without any problems. We've got a program dial here. The shutter button and power configuration is exactly the same as on a Nikon DSLR. We've got a rear control dial here and then we've got the usual front control dial here. Again, something you find on very high-end enthusiasts and professional DSLRs. On the rear of the camera, we have a three million dot EVF display and it looks like it's really, really high quality. There's aspherical lens elements and a lot of expensive glass just going into this electronic viewfinder. Now the rear display is articulated and tilting here. Again, much like you see on the Sony A7 and A9 cameras, we have a joystick control and other than that, just the usual directional control and button controls that you'd expect to find on any other Nikon DSLR camera. Like I said, Nikon DSLR users are going to be able to pick this up and start shooting straight away. Connection wise, we've got everything you'd expect to see on the camera. There's headphone socket, microphone socket. We've got the super fast new USB-C connection. Interestingly, they've opted for a MIDI HDMI, so not full size or micro. We've got the MIDI one, which you don't actually see used that often. And then finally at the bottom here, we've got the remote release socket just at the bottom. Now there is a new battery for the camera and early reports from Nikon themselves state that their photographers can get over 600 shots on a single charge. However, the SEPA rating is a little bit less generous and for this, the Z7, they are quoting 330 shots per battery charge. So that's pretty acceptable without kind of being outstanding. 330 shots should be fine for most photographers and we'll wait and hold judgment and see what it's like when we're recording video with that battery. So in terms of cards, we have just the one socket here. So not great news for those of you that like to shoot video on one card and stills on another card. And we've also opted for XQD. Now XQD cards, as we know, are quite expensive currently. However, in the first few months, if you buy a Z6 or a Z7 camera in Europe anyway, an XQD card will be bundled in. And with the popularity of this camera, no doubt the price of XQD cards will start to come down in the next few months, certainly sort of towards the new year. That's my guess anyway. So are the new Nikon Z6 and Z7 cameras, are they really gonna compete with Sony A7 series cameras when it comes to video? Well, I certainly think they could do, and there's a couple of reasons for that. We've got 4K from a full frame sensor with 10 bit output. Now, that's the first time we've been able to do that. Obviously the A7S2, we've got eight bit output through the HDMI. With the GH5, obviously 4K output is 10 bit, but we've got a four third sensor there, not full frame. Now the Leica SL, of course, is 10 bit output too, but that crops in when you're shooting 4K. So that could be a big deal. 10 bit output going into something like an Atomos, Ninja, Inferno, Shogun, one of those things that can make the most of that 10 bit at 4K recording in ProRes or ProRes RAW, that could be a big deal for filmmakers. We've also got the AF phase detection, a huge number of points, 90% coverage of that sensor surface. And on top of all that, we've got 
face detection whilst you're recording AF. And it seems pretty fast in the focusing mode when you're focusing for video. Now, obviously, these are just my initial thoughts and my initial reaction. I'm at the launch. I can't sadly show you any footage, but it's certainly one to think about. Now, we've got image stabilization actually inside the camera that Nikon claim is going to be good for up to 5EB. And you're going to be able to combine that with Nikon's VR lenses for some even more super stable footage. No ideas on quite how that works in terms of combining the two, but it's going to be something that hopefully is going to be very good for filmmakers as well as wildlife photographers and people who are going to have to be using long, heavy lenses with the Z7. And of course, one of the key things is we've got a new mount here. Now, this mount is larger than the Nikon F mount and we've got a very shallow flange back. So that's the distance between the back of the lens and where the sensor is itself. Very short distance there. Now, obviously when you have short distances like that, it can be problematic for wide angle lenses. So what Nikon have done to counter that is to actually make the lens mount itself quite large. Just look at the size of that lens mount. Hopefully, Nikon are gonna be able to produce a larger imaging circle with those lenses and with the larger mount, it should mean that we're gonna be able to get some fantastic wide angle shots and some wide angle lenses with this Nikon Z series of cameras. So the kit lens, it is a 24 to 70 f4 lens. However, there is also a 35 millimeter f1.8 lens and a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens that are both gonna be available at launch. So just be taking a few portraits with the 24 to 70 f4 lens. And I have to say, it's locking on using the face detection really, really quickly. Even when I noticed the subject, she moved the back of her head. And that face detection actually stayed locked on even while she turned. Not quite sure what witchcraft or magic is going into that, but it's certainly working very well from what I can see. So I've just been using the 2470 2.8 lens to take some portrait fashion style pictures with the Z7 and the mount adapter. And I have to say, there's absolutely no difference. It's as if I was shooting on a Nikon DSLR. The shutter's really nice, it's got a really nice sound to it. It's very responsive. I can't really tell any difference using the AF lens, you know, the F mount lens via the adapter. It's working exactly like, you know, it would do as if it was a native lens. So far, big thumbs up for that. So there's gonna be loads of different kits available at launch and different prices. I'm just gonna put all of those up on screen now because there is far too many to remember off the top of my head. Nikon are expecting the camera to be available in September, so it's gonna be shipping pretty soon. So that's it, that's my first look of the Nikon Z6 and Z7 cameras. Hoping to get a little bit more time with them in the next few weeks, where I'll be able to show you some images and do a full review. If this is your first time watching Photo Gear News, thanks a lot for watching, we appreciate the support. We do review videos and first look videos, features, technique videos, we upload around once a week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest Photo Gear News and reviews.